What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. The Switch is a powerhouse console, and the most popular game on there is Mario Kart. And it's not really a surprise, because it's fun for hardcore players and newbies alike. Especially with the new Booster Pass that's in the middle of coming out. And in the most recent versions, Mario and Friends have invited over other Nintendo properties to participate. So the question comes to mind, why not include the most successful video game-based franchise in the world? Well, probably because it would be better suited to do it on its own. So let's see what kind of courses we could make for Pokemon Kart. Modern Mario Kart games have eight standard pre's, and wouldn't you know it, we've currently got eight generations of Pokemon from which to pull. So each region can have its own set of tracks. So the Kanto Grand Prix will of course be first. And as easy as it would be to have a hometown course as a simple start off, that doesn't really sound super fun. So instead, our first track will be Viridian Forest Loop. This, of course, would take you around the familiar setting with lots of bug catchers and bug type Pokemon dotting the sides of the map, maybe even having some cocoons hanging down from the trees on strings over the dirt path. So that's a decent start to the first generation, but we could do so much more with our dear Kanto like many of the major cities. But I think our next course should be Haunted Lavender Tower. This would provide a great change of environment, surrounded by creepy tombstones, channelers, and even unidentified ghosts, as you circle through multiple layers of this spooky building. Which would make a very different, but equally compelling atmosphere for a race. So I think another good option would be the Safari Zone Stretch. As it is, the Safari Zone in Fuchsia City already forms a circle, so you could definitely do a few laps in a savanna climate with certain rare Pokémon lining the sides like Tauros and Kangaskhan, with even more rare ones as the laps progress, with say a Dragonair showing up in the lake on the last lap. It would be a lot of fun and be packed with Easter eggs. And lastly, I think it would be perfect to have the Kanto Victory Road. Honestly, this could be like the Rainbow Road of Pokemon Kart in that it shows up time and again from different regions. For Kanto, you would of course plunge into the depths of the cave system just before the Indigo Plateau, dodging falling Graveler and swarms of Golbat, zipping around strength boulders and hikers alike. This would of course be quite challenging, but it would be worth the effort to master so that you don't get overwhelmed by the Moltres that shows up in the final lap. All in all, I feel like this is an excellent start to our new Pokemon Kart endeavor. Next is the Johto Prix, and I think the first thing to highlight its unique flavor would be Ecrotique Towers. This being a drive through Ecrotique City, specifically the Burned Tower, as you drive down past where the legendary beasts are, a different one for each lap, and then you go to the top of the Bell Tower where Ho-Oh resides. This would lead to a gliding section all the way back down, letting you drink in the culture that Johto has to offer. Number two would be Goldenrod Junction, where you start through the radio tower, where you'll see some rocket grunts mid-battle, then you'll head down to the lower levels, winding through the basement of the department store, where you then bounce up through a few other shops, and then you end up on the maglev track trying to avoid the bullet train. I think including these aspects that can only be found here would help to emphasize how massive this city is with everything to do. I think it's best to then go to Ice Path Crossways, where you would spend the entire race zooming around jutting ice crystals with translucent frozen walls on an icy floor with, of course, a healthy showing of ice-type Pokémon from Johto like Piloswine, Sneasel, and Smoochum. And lastly, we would see the Whirl Islands Escapade. Another deep cave at the end of the pre, but this time it's around the water where you go down to the waterfall area where Lugia lives. And of course, there are plenty of other Pokémon that will pop up throughout this submerged cave system, so I think this would be an appropriate selection to represent Gen 2. Hoenn is next, and I would start off with Lava Ridge Roundabout. This would start you off in the town where you then hop down the ledges, and then you get shot out of a cannon flying past the cable car to the top of Mount Ember, which then leads to a breakneck race back down to the bottom. That would certainly be hectic and fun. Then I would also recommend Meteor Falls Passage, which would be a beautiful course with its shimmering pools and waterfalls, curious rock types poking out their head, and even a path outside to circle through the crater fields. A magnificent blend of the earth and water that the region is based around. Speaking of, I would further this theme by including Sea Mawville Wreckage. 
This would have the racers flying atop a perilous, decrepit ship, avoiding rusty holes, and then diving down below deck into the flooded sections, evading water-type Pokémon all the way, making for an exhilarating marathon through the ocean depths. And lastly for Gen 3, I think Sutopolis Circuit would be the perfect cap. The city is smack in the middle of a huge crater, which would make for an almost Delfino feel as you dart around dwellings, skip across the water in front of the gym, and maybe even delve into the Cave of Origin a little to get a peek at Groudon and Kyogre. This would be a charming little loop as you take in all the Hoenn flavor. But there are of course plenty more options from Ruby and Sapphire, so be sure to let me know your ideas down below. Then there's Sinnoh, and firstly, I believe Floraroma Valley would be a great track where you zip around the beautiful flower fields and then pass through the windmills of Valley Windworks, even dipping a little onto Route 205, crossing over the Pleasant Creek. I think that would be a lovely introduction to the Sinnoh Pre. Then, of course, one of their staples of the region is the Sinnoh Underground Labyrinth. This would be a great subterranean track with some sharp turns past hanging lanterns and wooden planks holding back the dirt, with glittering gems and evolution stones as splendid decor. Not to mention the new Pokémon dens that you could pass through with different environments that could be different each time you select the map, so it's a bit more varied than your typical cave track. But, speaking of, it would be wrong of us to ignore Mount Coronet, but we have plenty of caves, so instead we'll have Mount Coronet Peak, which is rather a jagged mountain pass with snow-covered trees, and of course plenty of snowver to wave at you, and we would have to make your way up to the Spear Pillar and see what that's all about, while getting a glimpse at the time-space deities. But we gotta have one more, and I think it would be perfect to include Sunny Shore Solar Way, where you drive on the elaborate solar panel paths of the final city in the region, passing by the lighthouse and the signature Munchlax Rock, and even by the gym itself. I understand that it's not advisable to actually drive on solar panels, but we can make an exception for having a far-off view of the wonderful Pokémon League in the distance. That would be a perfect way to top off Gen 4. Now, the Unova region has quite a bit too, but the first thing that I would point to is Chargestone Caverns. Once again, this is not your garden variety cave. Chargestone offers a unique environment, complete with electrified floating rocks and glowing stalagmites, and it would be an excellent opportunity to show us an array of Unova electric and steel types during the race too. Next, I think it would be best to go to the Desert Resort Relics. Really, it can be easy to make desert levels pretty boring, but I think the half-covered Darmanitan would at least be worth the sand in your eyes, or perhaps a trip down into the Relic Castle to see Volcarona would be a neat way to wrap it up as well. Not too far away, we would see the Nimbasa theme park. This would not only be part of the gym with its neon roller coaster aesthetic, but the outside would go around the other features, including the Ferris wheel. Honestly, the gyms themselves could probably be tracks all on their own, but Nimbasa's atmosphere is really unlike any other, and it displays an exhilarating collection of thrill rides. And for the last one, I think that we should head over to the Humalau Highway. This tropical setting is distinct from anything else in the region, so blasting by palm trees at high speeds on the beach would be a unique way to have fun. But mostly I chose this because of the Humalau Tunnel. This underwater tube is a great excuse to view all kinds of water types passing by, basically making a Pokemon version of Koopa Cape one of the best Mario Kart tracks. So I think that would be a phenomenal way to cap off the Gen 5 section. Kalos is next, and clearly the best foot forward is to put a course in Lumio City Loop. There are so many paths to take in this massive city, from the outer ring, to the smaller alleyways, to the open plazas, and of course, you would have to include the Prism Tower as the centerpiece. There's just so much that you could even have each lap be a different layout. But then not too far away from that, we would find Parfum Palace Gardens, which would of course be behind the giant mansion through the lovely shrubbery creating a maze-like structure between the patterns of Solrock and Pyroar, not to mention the nice statues that they have around there as well, creating a pleasant little Sunday stroll out back. Another track that I think would be a fun addition is the Kalos Winding Woodlands, this being located between Snowbell City and the Pokémon Village, and this somewhat spooky forest is notorious for getting you lost. So I feel like this would be a perfect course to have several winding paths where it could cost you time by taking the wrong one, with eerie Pokémon all about, such as Trevenant and Noctowl. I don't think that the paths would have to change necessarily, but this could be a nice little trick course to master. 
And of course, for the last one, I would say Kalos Victory Road would be suitable. We finally get to see another variant, but I think this one stands out because it exceeds the standard K formula with certain open air sections on the mountaintop, giving it a little more variety than past entries, and of course the Kalos Pokemon that would be along the track giving it an alternative feel from the more claustrophobic caves elsewhere. So I think that's a respectable showing for the Gen 6 spread. Alola is chocked full of possibilities like the Mahalo Trail, but we'll start with Wayla Volcano Park. Taking the track through the dry grass and past the lava, and even giving you a path up to the summit of the volcano where you can spy a traditional Marowak dance. I know that we did the Lava Ridge one already, but this one is a much different environment to be racing through at twilight. Next, I think Potown Circuit is a must. It's totally unmatched in any other Pokemon game in terms of atmosphere, so being surrounded by the graffiti, the trash, and the rundown buildings would be great fun. Not to mention the goofy grunts that would be everywhere, and the parts of the shady house that we could drive through as well. Seriously, they won't mind at all. I think the inverse would be good as well, going to the Aether Paradise Pathways. This would be wide open sterile white hallways going through the docks and the labs, with of course a delightful turn through the conservation level at the top to see all of the Pokemon that they've managed to help. Maybe even a quick jaunt past Lusamine's room where she froze all of those Pokemon against their will. But to finish it out, I think there is no better way than to make it the Ultra Space Odyssey. This is closer to an actual Rainbow Road, but a track through Ultra Space and passing in between various worlds of the Ultra Beasts would be incredible. It could even change with every time you choose the course, with a chance to see a legendary or two flying by every so often as well. But Alola probably has enough for at least another pre and a half, so let me know how you would organize it in the comments. And lastly, we have Galar, and this one was probably the easiest to lay out, because we start with Glimwood Tango, a mysterious forest filled with glowing mushrooms unlike any other wooded area in the game, made even more famous by that 24-hour livestream, so we could throw in some of those Pokémon too. Then of course the Wild Area Raceway is a no-brainer. There is no better spot in all of Galar to have wide open spaces through different weather conditions and seeing plenty of big Pokémon that would actually be hazards as they do chase after you here. For the third one, I think the Isle of Armor loop would be great, starting at the dojo and then speeding around the island with all of the connected paths as you go through the caves, forests, and even water, having the towers as prominent landmarks. But of course, that would lead us to the final track being the Crown Tundra Turnpike, which gets a similar treatment as you go down from Calyrex's castle, past all of the Reggie ruins and even the giant legendary tree, and obviously up through Freezington as you end the race in the Dynamax Adventure entrance. I think that would be an amazing run and show off all the fun aspects the better half of the DLC has to offer. So, those are the pre's that I would make for the first eight generations in Pokemon Kart, or whatever we want to call this game. Somebody mod this and then get back to me. However, there are of course many other options, not just from these games, but you could do multiple races based on side material, like Pokemon Snap, Mystery Dungeon, Pokemon Legends Arceus, or hey, even Poke Floats from Melee. Who knows? And of course you would have to flush out the rest of the game a little more, like a confirmed character roster and even items that you could use with their own unique functions. But honestly, I could see this happening since Pokemon is the biggest multimedia franchise in the world. So why shouldn't they have a real racing game outside of Pokemon Dash? What would you think of Pokemon Kart? What tracks would you include? Let me know down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And until next time, stay grounded!